Hello people, this is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. And use logic, use reason, and realize that religion is fake. Today is March 21st, 2020. So in this video, like a time capsule, I have to talk about what's going on at the time. Let me first say that uh, I have made an email for those that need to contact me or want to contact me. It's at williamjonesleavingreligion at gmail.com. It's going to be on the screen. And for those that are interested in getting the shirts, the I Left Religion, I Left Religion, Left is Right. I Left Religion and that's right. Shirts are going for $20. You can hit me on Cash App, PayPal. We can talk in the... Uh, uh, an email if that's if you're interested in getting a shirt all right so let me get into this video oh and also on Facebook still have the group leaving religion on Facebook and uh, just answer the questions and the admins will add you some people choose to skip the questions and they will deny you just answer the questions and come on into the group all right so let me get into this well, like I said it's, it's, it's March 21st 2020, and in this time capsule, we're dealing with the spread of coronavirus. This is where we are, and I'm saying this now because it's be three years later, like coronavirus. I forgot all about that. We're dealing with the coronavirus. The virus that supposedly started in China from bats, and uh, from them eating bats, let me say, and it just is spreading everywhere. And from what from reports, you know, uh, people are catching it and dying it. And at this point, they're telling us in Italy that they've had the most deaths. Here in America, we have a lot of cases, and I think California is shut down, and uh, is, is is it New Jersey is shut down, and some places have shut down. So I know here in Georgia, where I am in the Atlanta area. Um, Restaurants are not really uh, like Golden Corral and other buffets. They're, they're closed right now. Or you can go to drive throughs at a lot of restaurants. And um, But the lobbies, if you go in the lobby, you can go in, get your stuff, and you got to get out. There is no sitting and eating. You got to get in, get out. So that's what's going on right now. And we'll see how it goes. And at the same time, here in 2020, the presidential election is going on which I see this affecting the election. I don't know how people can campaign and get together and talk when you can't, you can't get together. You can't have rallies. So I don't know how that's going to work. You can't have a rally and it's 2020. We, they're, they're doing the election. So the economy is just slipping because people can't go to work. You can't go to work. You can't pay your bills. So something has to give, you know. Uh, the NBA has shut down right now. A lot of sporting events or events where you gather is not happening. And so this is a point where a lot of us are saying, um, hey, Christians, where's your God? Oh, then won't he do it? Oh, he's a healer. The blood of Jesus. Where is this God now? And I've heard nothing but excuses. Oh, it's prophecy. Prophecy is to end times. End time and God allowing it to happen. Translation, my God can do absolutely nothing about what's going on. Oh, no, man made it. So man is going to have to find the cure. Yet again, my God will do absolutely nothing. And now they're about to close churches. you got your mega churches. I know T.D. Jakes closed down the Potter's house. I guess Creflo is going to close down uh, World Changes. Uh, New Life Ministries with Jamal Bryant over there. They done shut down. Now they're going to do, they got the cash apps going. You can pay your tithes and offerings through the cash apps and online. 
and they're going to be streaming online. The place that's supposed to be the place of power, and when something like this happened, Jesus talking about lay hands on the sick, now you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, they're shutting down too. Religion is being exposed. You are no different than those that don't believe your myth. You have absolutely no power at all. And, and, and because of their cognitive dissonance, they can't see this and they're going to make all kind of excuses. I don't care how, how, how articulate you are, how great you are at debating, how many sources you feel you can pull up, how historical you think Jesus is, how real you think the Bible is, in a real crisis, your God and your religion means absolutely nothing. Nothing. Where are you right now? On the sidelines, making excuses, waiting for the CDC to find a cure, waiting for the scientists to find a cure, while your God does, yet again, absolutely nothing. Nothing. And share this video with them, please, please. Now, this is the time where Jesus is supposed to shine. Oh, Jesus coming back. Oh, so now he's coming back. He wasn't coming back on the swine flu. He didn't come back with SARS. Huh? He, he didn't come back. He didn't come back dur during all this racism. World War I, World War II. You can name it all to go all the way back. Slavery. He didn't come back then. And I doubt he'll come back for coronavirus because you got to come the first time to come the second time. And then most of us who know, know that Jesus is just a personification of the Son. It's all about the Son. It's all about the Son. The S-U-N. And I was telling a believer today, you know, uh, they, they want to talk about, let's talk about reality. Well, 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 what is reality? Oh, you know, what reality is, what's real? The sun is real. I said, from, from what I know, most religions, the, the basis of what they actually worship is the sun. And they get upset about that, like, oh, they worship in the sun. Well, at least we know the sun is real. The S-U-N. We know the sun in the sky is real. We don't know Jesus is real. Nobody believes in the sun. Everybody knows the sun in the sky is real. Whether you're a human, you feel it. Animals, they feel it. The whole, the whole earth feels the heat of the sun when it's glaring down and it's 95 degrees. Now, some places over 100 degrees. We're all aware of this sun without anybody feeding us any false doctrine about anything. We know it's extremely hot. I don't have to tell you it's hot. You don't have to tell me it's hot. We know it's hot. And we have to cover up and protect ourselves from it. Whether you got on sunscreen, you got on sun hats, or you got like in the Middle East, they wear all the garb. You think they're hot, but they're actually covering themselves from the sun. The idiots are the ones who walking down the street thinking they're keeping cool by taking their shirt off. No, you're exposing yourself to the sun. You got to cover up from the sun. The animals, they're aware of the sun, how hot it is. I remember watching one documentary, they showed a the little lizard, and he's out there on the sand, and he'll lift up this, this paw, this foot, this paw, and this foot, and he'll do like this, because the sand is so hot from the sun, and he switches. I don't know how intelligent this animal is, but he feels the effects of the sun. He don't feel the effects of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. They are aware of the sun. People worship the sun because the sun on, on earth is very important. Because if the sun did not show up, 
we'd all be in trouble and we wouldn't last long. The Mayans used to sacrifice a person every day for the sun to come back up the next day. I could only be uh, uh, I could only imagine how surprised they were when the Europeans came over there and pushed uh, Catholicism or Christianity on them and conquered them and those that did survive saw they didn't make a sacrifice and the sun came up anyway. They're like, wow, we're just killing people for nothing. It was going to come up anyway. Yet again, that's religion. That's religion. Killing for nothing. And then, they, they, like I said, they want to group people, oh, you're atheists. I just don't believe your myths. Now I got to have a name. I just don't believe what I don't believe what you're selling me. It just doesn't make sense. And I, I shouldn't. Why am I considered evil or something? Because I don't believe the foolishness you're selling me. If I don't want to buy Girl Scout cookies, do is there a name? You're, you're anti Girl Scouts. How about I just don't want the cookies? I just don't want them because. The same people who say that when Jehovah's Witnesses come to their door, they don't want to answer the door, or they don't want the Watchtower, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and the Awake Book. You don't want it. But now you got to get a title because you don't want it. You just don't want it. You don't believe in the flying spaghetti monster religion. So does that make you anti-spaghetti uh, monster? Or you just, it just sounds foolish to you, you don't like it. Are you anti-Islam because you don't want to be a Muslim? Or you just don't receive it? So as I was saying, so we got to get a title. Because you refuse to believe. Look, believe in something that someone else doesn't. Something that they can't even prove is real. You can show me all kind of literature. You, you can show me the smoking gun. So you think, but who pulled the trigger? Show us the person that pulled the trigger to the smoking gun. I shouldn't have to believe. I should be able to know. And if I, if I can't know, I'm not believing. I always say that. If I don't know, I'm not believing. So here we are in the midst of all of this mess. And your God can't do anything different than Zeus can do. Than Medusa can do. Then Mercury can do. Mars. Huh? Hera. Hercules. Odysseus. Dionysus. Diana. Marduk. Baal. Your God falls in the same category of being able to do absolutely nothing. So believe y'all, listen to this, you're going to hear a lot of excuses. So here we go, it's Saturday, this is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday, let, let, I mean, you, you got the mega churches are closing down. Let's see, some of these churches probably ain't got but 10 members, so they're good to set up. They're the older churches, but any older church, they shouldn't be out anyway. Those churches are dying. I mean, the bottom line is, this, look, 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 this is what they don't understand. Some of them don't want to realize this, that Christianity is on the decline. And when you're dealing with the uh, with Generation Y and the Millennials, a lot of them are just not believing this stuff because it just, in 2020, it sounds ridiculous. And he, he came back from the dead, but they don't see any difference. There, there's, there's, there's no actual help here. None. Jesus does absolutely nothing. Nothing. And for some reason, quoting Bible scripture, ooh, uh, Romans 8, say, ah, oh, ooh, 1 Corinthians, say, ah, well, yeah, in the Quran it says here in Surah, what have you, that don't mean nothing to you. Same way that means nothing to you, whatever you quote out of that book means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. So what everybody's going to do is sit around and do the same thing. And wait for them to make a, a a cure for it or something that we can live with it, like the flu, because they ain't got rid of the flu. 
it's seasonal, you know. It was an epidemic, but now it's, it comes back at a certain time of the year. So it's looking like Corona might in turn, it's, it's flu-like. So they'll just add on to what that is. You know, viruses are, are alive. And, and they, I, I'm not saying I'm deeply into evolution, but we do know when you keep taking an antibiotic, whatever it is you're taking, that thing evolves to where that antibiotic doesn't work anymore. So they have to change the antibiotic because the virus they were dealing with has evolved into something else to get around the, the antibiotic. It's life. So people are, oh, you all into evolution. And you know, the, let me, I'm, I'm going to put this to the side where all of the misconceptions or the ideas that believers have about what a non believer is, they have a lot of twisted, delusional ideas of what non believers are. And many of you deal with this when you leave religion and have to deal with your religious family members, your religious friends, your religious co-workers, your religious former church members. What they have to make up in their mind to continue to make the myth real to them, they have to make up something to push it on you so that that way what they believe is it's untouched. They can't change what they believe, so I must, I must put something on you in order for me to continue to live with the world of the religion and the ideologies that I have. Because it definitely can't be the religion, it can't be the, the image of God I have in my mind, so the problem has to be you. It has to be you. This is where the cognitive dissonance sets in. This is where it sets in. And I mean, I'm hearing things like, uh, okay, well, where is your, this, oh, this is the main one they use all the time. What is your moral compass if you don't believe in God? And, 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 and when you come out of religion, the question itself sounds absolutely stupid. What is your moral compass? What the hell is a moral compass? If you don't look, believe in God. I don't, I don't even know God. You don't know him. Because you're saying you believe in him. So if you're saying you believe in him, you don't know him either. So your moral compass is based on what? Treat others like you'd like to be treated. It's just that simple. If I buy something and put it in the refrigerator, I don't want you to eat it. So that means if I see something in the refrigerator and I didn't buy it, I shouldn't eat it. You, you, you see how it works both ways. It worked, it worked itself. You work it forward to backward, backwards to forward, and it works the same way. You see that? I bought this car, so I don't want you to steal it. You see that? I shouldn't steal this car. Why? Because I didn't buy it. It works. That, that's, mor that's moral compass. I worked hard for my money, so if you're selling something, it should be legit, and you shouldn't beat me out of my money and not give me what I paid for. I'm not going to beat you out of your money and not give you what you paid for because you worked hard for that money. So do I need a God to tell me this? Do I need a God to tell me this? And for those, of, for those out there that need some help, you have the law. Man, oh that girl, oh she fine, she look good. I'm gonna go talk to her. You know what I'm saying? You know, next next week is gonna be my 35th birthday party. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go talk to her. Hey girl, how you doing? You fine, you cute, yeah. How old are you? 16? 
right then. Now, I don't need a moral compass. I need an understanding of the law. She's not 18. So if you don't have a moral compass, guess what? The law gives you one. If she's not 18 and you are over 18, that statutory rape, whether if she agrees with it, according to the law, you can't do that. So some people don't get that. See, because you saw, you said she's fine and she's willing to do it, but you are over 18. So your moral compass now is the law. Don't do that. Oh, she's fine and she's down with it. But according to the law, don't do that. I remember one time I was on the, on the bus here, the MARTA. And, you know, uh, I did a lot of transporting on the MARTA. And this little young girl walked by and all the dudes on the bus, everybody was looking like, Woo, mm, she's fine. She, she was obviously young. And one, you had the one dude on the bus, he said, 15 to get you, uh, what is that? 15 to get you 20. I was like, damn. <laughs> 15 to get you 20. You understood that. She might look fine, and she even might be game. But if she ain't over 18, don't you do that. I went to the uh, corner store just yesterday, and I'm walking in, and the young boy was like, hey, yo, man, what's up, what's up? Hey, can you buy me a black and mild? You know, they had changed the law and stuff. I was like, oh, they did? Yeah. And I'm 19. Oh, okay. So I didn't know, according to the law now, you, you got to be 21 to buy tobacco products. He was like, well, you know, can you get that for me? I said, look, man. I said, one, I'm not doing it because I come in quite a bit. And they know I don't buy any black and miles. So I'm not doing it. Now, and, I, and I had to Google it later. Like, and I asked the guy, the I said, what's, what's the, um, the age on the, on the tobacco? He was like, they changed it to um, 21. I thought it was still 16. I didn't know it had went to 18. So I thought it was still 16. And then he talking about he 19. Well, I thought you were over 18, but the law done changed it to 21. I didn't know that. So for my moral compass, I'm going to tell you this. The law always tell you, you know, if somebody asks you to buy them alcohol or tobacco products and ain't, ain't over age, how do I know you ain't in on the sting and somebody sitting around the corner you wearing a well, I don't know, but I'm not going to be a part of that. I said, look, man, I can't do it. Find you somebody else, but guess what? I ain't doing it. And I remember being in that position when I was his age. And no, I wasn't a cop or anything. I just wanted some beer. But the person wouldn't, some would do it, some wouldn't. And I get it. Uh, but guess what? I wouldn't. I don't know you. And I ain't doing it. So that's how that goes. If you let's say you was at my house and you was 19 and you know and and I go to the store and I buy some black and miles and bring them back to the house and give them to you. That's one thing. But I just met you outside the store, I'm not doing it. But my bottom line is this. For those that don't have a moral compass, the law gives you one. And some people just are sociopaths or psychopaths. And they're gonna break the law, and so, and so this, this this is another thing they try they 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 try to make it out to be like uh, uh, Christians try to make it out to be like if you don't have God, you're just gonna be immoral. You you have to have like what do you base the good and where do you base good on and what do you base evil on? And it's like, do you really have to ask this? If you are a grown person and have to ask, what do we base good and evil on, and you're religious, you have a mental issue. You have a mental issue. You really do. You gotta have. So you so who who says murder is wrong? So your your God and your Bible murdered 
But you don't say it's murder because, well, he gave life. So if he took life, then it's okay. No. Thou shalt not kill. Now wipe them out utterly. Kill all the men. Kill all the women. Kill all the infants. Kill all the elderly. Kill all the animals. But if there are any young women who have not known a man or had sex with a man, they're virgin, keep them for yourself. This is written by a man. This is not written by some god. Well, why would he care what you do with the virgins? He can't have sex with them. But whoever wrote that could. So all of a sudden, so your your Bible is full of you and you allow slavery, you allow rape, you allow stoning someone for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. And then you're talking about what is your basis of morality? No, what is your basis of morality? Because if you're going by that Bible, and at the same time judging Muslims for being wrong by going by the Quran, they only learned it from you. They learned that from you. All these torture devices to make people believe or scare others into believing and, and burning them at the stake and, and, and the racks and all the things they did to make people believe came from those who so-called believe this Bible and this religion. They were religious. They were not atheists. They were religious. That came into a place and destroyed people and forced their religion on them. They were religious. I come in the name of nobody to destroy y'all. And then every time somebody does something, they don't, they're not a Christian. They want to try to label it and say, oh, atheist, this person was an atheist, and that's why they did it, because they was an atheist. Like there's a spirit behind not believing in your myth. Since I don't believe in the imaginary thoughts in your head, there's got to be your imaginary devil behind me pushing me because I don't believe in your imaginary God. When, the, when studies show, or the facts show, that countries that are less religious have the least amount of crime. Crime, the highest crime rates happen in the places that have the most religion. Facts. Facts. Nobody stones somebody for doing something when you don't believe in a God. Why? They help each other. All the money they spend in church, y'all could actually get something done. You start spending all that money in church and put that money into real things. So these pat, come on. Mm. Let, mm. Let, me, let me just say, I'm just gonna say, let me say this, try to get back to what I was saying. So you worried about having a $40 million jet so you can travel to be somewhere to speak to make some more money. But then your believers will say that God can speak through anyone. He can speak through an ass if he wants to. But there's nobody in that place where they, where they need to go that can speak for this person and save that $40 million and take that $40 million and you have a family over here. They could use a a $3,500 used car to get back and forth to work because I, I have been in the situation where I had to catch public transportation three hours one way. Three hours to get to work through three different county systems, three hours to get home. So on top of working eight hours that day, I spent six of those hours sitting on either the bus or the train. I did it. Lived it. Couldn't wait for the weekend because at the crack of dawn, I got to catch the bus 5 o'clock in the morning to be to work at 8 o'clock, 
and I get off at 5 o'clock and don't get home till 8 o'clock to be back up again to catch the bus again at 5 o'clock. I dropped the prophet off the back, put the pastor in front Did this whole song here without sparking a blunt Not the one of the litter, litter, but a much, much bigger So don't you ever test my nigga I'm not a Grady baby, wasn't born in the eighth But these feet done walk miles of Georgia clay Slept in the streets with the homeless for starters C-Trans, C-C-T, and the Marta Charter A trip for my life to the bottom of the barrel Got my eyes on the body, kept his eyes on the spam It's an incline waiting for the weekend. So you mean to tell me you worried about a $40 million jet and it's not your first jet. It's not your only jet. But you need a $40 million jet when you have people sitting right in front of you that you want to give you the money that could use a $3,500 car to get back and forth to work and spend more time with their family. You have people who just need money to pay a power bill, a $150 power bill. You have people who just need to, they might need two grand, three grand to save the house that they've been in for 12 years. They don't want to lose it. You see what I'm saying? This is, what I'm, this is what I'm saying. You could take that $40 million if you really was about God and use that money to help the people that's actually sitting in front of you giving you the money. But you'll take the $40 million and spend it on a jet. Can you fly that jet? No. So now you got to pay a pilot. Can I pull up to the corner store at the quick trip and put gas in that jet? No, you got to pay for that fuel. Can I just land that jet in the middle of the highway or in front of the church and get out? No, you got to land that jet at an airport and still got to get some transportation to go where you got to go. So can I take this jet to Pet Boys to get it fixed? No, you have to have train aviation, to, uh, you know, um, mechanics to work on it and to do the maintenance on this jet. So it ain't just like you just buy it and that's it. You got to buy it and it costs more money. You can't put, you know, five on pump six for a jet. You got to put pounds. Pounds, not dot pounds into a jet. For you to show up somewhere in a two thousand dollar suit, huh? Three hundred dollars, five hundred dollar shoes, five hundred dollar tie. All this to show up to give a message to some people that don't have money to take their money to fly your jet back home. This is what we're talking about here. You ain't worried about the people in front of you. You ain't worried about the people that's around your church. You know, and I'm uh, what uh, what's his name? Kenneth Copeland, crook, crook. Oh, Tyler Perry sold me that jet for a good price. I had to buy it. your fourth jet, your fourth jet, because you can't ride in a fuselage full of sinners and demons when you're supposed to have the power of your God, but you can't be around the spirits that are lesser. And, and submissive or su yeah, submissive to your God. You got to ride in a private jet to go somewhere. You're a crook. A crook. These people just lie to these people. Oh, I want my pastor to look good. While you don't. While you at work staring at the clock, can't wait to get off and hating the job but you gotta work it to pay your bills and then at the same time will take 
at least 10% of your check. That's just uh, at least 10%. Look, of the of the net, not the gross, the net for tithe, and then something for offering. And I've seen it where they've paid tithes and offers and have to get a second job to cover stuff when if you just keep your own money, you could pay it. Keep all your own money. You don't owe them nothing. What are they, what are they giving you? A message? You, I could turn damn TV on and get a message from all these Christian stations. And now that they do it, they taking money out your, they, they doing uh, automatic drafts out your money. Like it's a real bill. Automatic deductions out your stuff like it's a real bill. And these folks, they don't care how these folks are, are suffering and can't pay their bills. And the senior citizens shouldn't have to pay nothing because if you tithed all that time while you was working, don't tithe off of your Social Security. That money is the money you paid in, you've already tithed off of. They should be coasting. They should be coasting because they've already tithed off of the money they're receiving. I mean, like I said, we go deeper, you don't have to tithe. That has nothing to do with the Bible, nothing to do with religion, now. Crooks. And then you got a couple out there. Yeah, you got a couple of churches out there. Yeah, we do some good and then what have you. But the vast majority don't. If you're a 501c3, you owned by the government. So if the government say, hey, shut it down because of coronavirus, you have to do that. Why? Because, yeah, the, everybody think the church is yours, but when you file, file that 501c3, that's actually the government. And they can tell you whatever they want to tell you because, oh, you want to be legit, I mean, you want to do your own thing, then pay the taxes. Pay the taxes. The Bible says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. But we ain't going to pay no taxes because we did a 5013C. So you won't even render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. You want the tax cut and still want to rob the people. I mean, religion is ri ridiculous. Hey, let me go back to what I was saying. I'm, 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 I'm way over here. So, um, so we're talking about, they, they're talking about what an atheist is. And I'm a realist. I'm just a realist. We, we, we're real. If you can't show me something, I'm not going to believe it. Why do I have to believe it? Why do I have to believe it? I want to sell you this. I want to sell you this lawnmower. Okay, where is it? I mean, I got it. Just, you know, give me the money for it and I'll have it shipped to you. Can I see it? I, I told you I got it. Can I see it? Why you got to see it? Have faith. I got it. John Deere, you know what I'm saying, 46 inch, Briggs and Stratton motor in it, I got it. Just give me the money, I'm going to ship it to you. We don't, we, don't, we don't play like that in the real world. Mm -mm. I want to see it, touch it, I want, we, I want a receipt, I want all of that. We ain't, we, ain't playing, we ain't playing these games in the real world, only in, only in a fake imaginary world. Can you get stuff and, and you ain't seen it? You investing in the life to come, which has nothing to do with your money. I thought Jesus dying on the cross, I thought that settled it. So if Jesus dying on the cross settled it, why you got to keep paying? Why you got to keep paying if on the cross paid? I thought, I th ain't that what they said? Him dying on the cross, what? Paid the price. So the price has been paid, but you got to keep paying. So what? So maybe his death on the cross was credit. It was credit. So we paid, his, we paid for your sins on credit, and now you got to pay off the credit card. Which one is it? Which one is it? Did it pay it, or it just... 
was credit card pay and now I gotta pay it. Cause even right now the blood ain't working. Right now the blood is infected with coronavirus. The blood ain't working. The blood is just grape juice. And a, and a dry cracker that gets stuck in your teeth. That's what the blood is right now. Eating his body, you zombies. The blood ain't working. He might need a blood transfusion. Because the blood ain't working. Now they looking for a, a cure or something, because guess what? The blood ain't working. Jesus, I thought your blood, your blood, your blood full of alcohol. You drunk. This is why the blood ain't working. You can't drink all that wine. It's not working. The blood ain't working. Oh, man. Oh, back to that. So the atheist is supposed to be immoral. If you don't believe in their God, you're immoral. And you want to just rape and kill. And steal. And just be a crook because you don't believe in their imaginary God in their head. That they can't show you. But yet all the scandal happened in the church. Drug tra sex trafficking happening in the church. Molestation happening in the church. Laundering of money happening in the church. All this stuff is happening in the church. But and then you want to ask me, well, what's what do you base morality on? What do you base morality on? Because from what I'm seeing, y'all ain't moral. You shacking. Come on. They shacking. I done seen it. You screwing Saturday night and then singing, you know, um, I was made to worship you. And praise is what I do. Right. You wasn't saying that last night. Or was that what you were saying? You said, oh God, oh God, oh God. Is that what that was? Was that praise? Or he was fornicating? Or committing adultery? Boy, they so full of crap. All right, people, I'm just gonna go ahead and end this video. This vent I had because of uh, Technical situations, you know, battery life, disc life, all of these things, all the technical stuff. So I'm going to have to upgrade some stuff to be able to do these longer videos. This was cool when it was 10 minute, 15 minute videos. Now to make them longer, it just things have changed. So, but uh, I'm going to stay on this stuff, all right? And I'm going to make more videos. I'm trying to get, get a couple out. Just a couple of shootouts right now. Because we got the corona thing going on. And you know just stay uh, active. What's going on. And what's happening right now. But let's just see if any God. If it be Allah or Yahweh. Or you know. Uh, Odin. Zeus. Or the Scientology people are going to step. Let's see who's going to step forward. In this time to show that religion is really something. Let's see what religion steps forward. Because none of them seem to. And, and, and like I said, what's the, what's the difference between a non-believer and a believer? Other than the fact that the believers believe something. They believe they're in a better position. Which they're not. And they believe they'll have something after death. Which they won't. And quoting scriptures means... Absolutely nothing. They have nothing. They have nothing but assumptions. Oh, because you don't believe you're possessed by devils or you worship Satan, but I don't believe you're God. Everything they're saying is null and void. It's just you're trying to protect a religion that is slowly dying like many other religions have done. And it's going to take some years, but with the millennial, with, with Generation Y and, and, and the millennials, it's diving. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm Generation X. Uh, some of my kids, most of them are Generation Y and then Generation, and then they are the millennials. Whatever come out the millennials is done. If they live past millennials, they're done.
Religion's about to be done. It's, it's a business. It's business. Business with no results. You you don't have to have a warehouse to to to, uh, to house your product because your product is hope. Your product is faith. It's nothing. You have a product that is nothing. And it's not showing itself in the time of need. Christianity, religion, guess what? We don't need you. You are useless in 2020. You are utterly useless in 2020. And as a wise man once said, Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Boop, 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 boop. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Right. Religious faith is the end of your show. Good night, religion. Good night. Do, 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 do. Peace.